Revelation chapter 2. How many people here uh, have read the book of Revelation? Thank you. Uh, let's do Revelation. How do you say Revelation in Thai? We want. We want, that's right. <laughs> we want. All right. And if you know in Revelation chapter 2, there is not just one church, right? There wasn't just one church represented. In fact, there is a message to seven churches. So there are seven churches that God actually addresses in the book of Revelation. Okay, and I brought a slide to sort of show you where those are. Okay, that's the church in Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Smyrna, Philadelphia. Can y'all say Philadelphia? Philadelphia. Yeah. Ephesus, that was ours, and Laodicea. All right, that is not Laos. Okay, that is not Laotia or Laos, but that is Laodicea. Okay. And those seven churches, we have actually found the cities that those churches are existing. Okay. Now, if you don't recognize uh, this past map, you may recognize this map. This is a map of the Turkish Republic, okay, or modern day Turkey, okay. And uh, the seven churches are all in Turkey. And so, if you ever want to visit those sites, then you want to take an airplane ride to Turkey. Uh, John, have you been to Turkey? Yeah. Yeah, have you been to every single one of these sites? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So you know exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. I've seen some of your YouTube videos. Very excited about that. But if you don't know uh, where Turkey is, let me show you a map that may give you some sense of where it is. So give me the next map, please. Right there, okay? So you can see on the map, there's Thailand. Come on, Thai, right? Uh, Russia, the Kansai on the left over there, I've circled the area of Turkey. Okay, so that's where we are in modern day uh, history. Okay, and where the seven churches of Asia actually are. Okay, now as we read through the book of Revelation in chapters 2 and 3, we find there are seven churches, and each one of these churches has different characteristics, different characteristics that are listed there that we can get to simply by reading God's Word. So for example, we read to you Revelation uh, chapter 2 this morning in the book of Ephesians, and in Ephesians it says, you know, we, we appreciate your perseverance, that's what we read about the church of Ephesus, right? Do you remember? It was only maybe 20 minutes ago. We appreciate your perseverance. We appreciate your faithfulness. We appreciate your hard work. But we don't appreciate, or what I don't like, is that you've lost your first love. That was for the church of Ephesus. Well, there are seven other churches, all right, that are listed there. In Revelations 2, if you turn your uh, Bibles to Revelations 2, there's another Revelation 2. Excuse me, it's not Revelations because there was only one Revelation. That's the revelation of God. So Revelation chapter 2, verse 8, says this. It says, And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, The first and the last who was dead and has come to life says this, I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich, and the blasphemy by those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison so that you will be tested and you will have tribulation for 10 days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. So with each one of these churches, John writes a message from God. God says there's something good about them. God says something bad about them. And if they change from that sin, then God promises them something. Okay? So again, in uh, Ephesus, right? 
Uh, again, God says something good, you have endured. But something bad, you lost your first love. So what should you do? What should you do? Remember from the sermon? What, what should you do if you lost your first love? You? Repent. Repent. Or kapjai, right? And if you do that, then in verse 7 it says, To him who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. So that's Ephesus. The second church is Smyrna. And to Smyrna, he says, okay, I know you, I see you, Smyrna, because you are one of my churches. And you will suffer, Smyrna, persecution. <coughs> it's what it says in chapter 2. It says, you will suffer persecution because of me. You will suffer because of me. All right? And, we, and I appreciate the fact, Smyrna, that you have gracefully suffered for me. And Smyrna is actually great because Smyrna is one of the churches that God doesn't say anything bad about. All that he tells them to do is even though you suffer, be faithful. Be faithful through that suffering, even until you die. And if you do, after you die, you will receive the crown of life. How do you translate crown of life in Thai? Was it Mongol? Thank you. Meet you with, right? That's what you will receive, Smyrna, to this church in Smyrna, if you suffer and you endure for me. The third church we encounter in Revelations is the church in Pergamum. And it says this, And to the angel of the church in Pergamum write, The one who has the sharp two-edged sword says this, I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast my name and did not deny my faith even in the days of Antipas, my witness, my faithful one who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you, Pergamum, because you have there some who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who kept teaching Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit acts of immorality. So you, you also have some who in the same way hold the teachings of the Nicolaitans. Therefore repent. Or else I am coming to you quickly, and I will make war against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, to him I will give some of the hidden man, that's in verse 17, and I will give him a white stone and a new name written on the stone, which no one knows who he, uh, he who receives it, okay? So this is the third church. Third church is Pergamum. God says something good about them, that they keep the faith of Christ. Should we keep the faith as Christians? Yes. Absolutely, all right? But he says, even though you have kept the faith in your church, you tolerated immorality. You tolerated idolatry. You tolerated heresy. And so what, you, what must you do, church in Pergamum? You must repent. Kap jai, right? And if you repent, and you continue to keep the faith, then you will receive the hidden manna. You remember manna, right? You just die manna to put out. So but why you uh right? If you don't tolerate that immorality. So like for example, you know, in that church, somebody came in there and they didn't preach just about Jesus, they talked about Jesus and something else. And so they tolerated that. They said, it's okay. It's okay. But God doesn't like it because God has His word and we must follow His word. Amen? Amen? The fourth church He speaks to is in verse 18, the church of Thyatira. It says, And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, The Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and His feet are like a burnished bronze, says this, I know your deeds. 
and your love and faith and service and perseverance, and that your deeds of late are greater than at first, but I have this against you, that you tolerate the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, and she teaches and leads my bondservants astray, so that they commit acts of immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent, and she does not want to repent of her immorality. Behold, I will throw her on a bed of sickness, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of her deeds. And I will kill her children with pestilence, and all the churches will know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts, and I will give to each one of you according to your deeds. But I say to you, the rest who are at Thyatira, who do not hold to this teaching, who have not known the deep things of Satan as they call them, I place no other burden on you. Nevertheless, what you have, hold fast until I come. Never, uh, he who overcomes and he who keeps my deeds until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of the potter are broken to pieces, as I also have received authority from my Father, and I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now I know that's a lot of words in English, and I know that's even more words, especially if you speak Thai and you don't speak much English, but let me sum this up in terms of what this means. God sees the church also in Thyatira. Thyatira. And he sees in that church love, service, faith, and patience that is greater than even when they first began. So But what he also sees is that this church in the midst of that even though they have love, they also tolerate some sort of cult of idolatry when they say Jezebel. They tolerate some sort of false leader, some false teaching and, um, and immorality. They tolerate that. They don't want to say anything about that. So what does God say to do? God says what? Repent. And, and if you repent, God says to this church, and I will make you the ruler of nations and receive the morning star. Morning star. Let's talk about morning star in life. We will give you the morning star. That's what he says to Thyatira. Now the next church that he speaks to is in the church in Sardis. And this is in chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. And these are the words of God. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your deeds, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen the things that remain, which were about to die, for I have not found your deeds completed in the sight of my God. So remember what you have received and heard. Keep it and repent. Therefore, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come to you. But you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will thus be clothed in white garments, and I will not erase his name from the book of life. And I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So what does he say to Sardis? He said, God says to Sardis, Sardis, I recognize that some of you have kept the faith. But what I have against you, Sardis, is that you are a dead church. You're not doing my work. 
You've stopped. You've stopped. And so what I have to say to you now is what you need to do is you need to repent. Again, repent again. Come die. Right? And keep the faith. Repent. And even though there is a small, but there is amongst you a small amount of you. Me kon bang kon. Uh, you know, a few of you left, right? That still believe, that still have faith, that still want to serve the church. So if you still have that, then you strengthen those few of you, okay? Like, for example, you here in this place, right? All of the church came to listen to the sermon, right? But some have left. Some of you didn't even come. It didn't come, right? But you here, even though you don't always understand what I say, even though you still came here to study the Word of God. There's still a few of you who have strength, still have faith. And so what God says to this church in Sardis is, Keep the faith. Strengthen what you have. Grow the people that are that still want to learn. Because that is the future of the church. That's what he says to Sardis. The next church is a church called Philadelphia. Now Philadelphia is a very unique church. Because without reading it, Philadelphia is a church that God actually has nothing bad to say about. He says only good things. In fact, the word Philadelphia, Philae, means what? Love. Love, right? Delphia means what? Pun. Brother. So Philadelphia, brotherly love, right? And so God looks at this church in verses 7 through 13. And he says, I see you. And I see the love that you have. And it's the one church, he says, I have nothing negative to say against you. But all I have to say to you is this, even though you have love, I want you to do this. Keep that love. Keep that love. And if you do that, it says in verses 7 through 13 that you will have a place in God's presence. That you will have a new name and a new city. The new Jerusalem. Well, where is that new city? Well, that new city which you will have one day is heaven. So what? La chua pachao by so what? And it's a beautiful place. A place of love. A place of happiness. A place of joy. A place where we're reunited with all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. 